Welcome in this first workshop in a series of two that looks at your Phenakistoscope animations you created for project number one and how you can translate them into an animation file uh, using Adobe Premiere. I just want to quickly recap uh, some of the techniques and strategies that I used in order to capture the individual frames of your Phenakistoscope animation uh, using the modified Phenakistoscope frame from the first project. Uh, and then your cell phone in order to record individual still images off of the Phenakistoscope discs. As you can see here, I um, am recording these frame by frame, rotating the disc counterclockwise um, on the wooden block from the Phenakistoscope frame um, so that I, in the end, create a total of 12 still images of your Phenakistoscope animation. We will bring in all 12 of these individual pictures into Adobe Premiere in just a second, and then I will show you how you can animate them and merge them with your sound to create a final animation from that. Here I also quickly demonstrate how I used uh, branches from the false indigo bush that grows in my garden uh, with the seed capsules to record the rattling sounds that I wanted to use uh, with my final animation in Premiere. We begin this workshop with an empty folder on the desktop that I call Phenakistoscope. And as you can see, I have already downloaded all the files that are necessary for this workshop. You can find a link to a download of these files in the comments section of this video. I take this uh, folder with my source files and I just drag and drop it into the Phenakistoscope folder so that we have all the files, including the files that we're going to generate today uh, in one folder, which makes it really easy for backup and for moving these files if need be also keeps it really nice and contained in one folder so you don't need to keep track of where certain project files, media files and so forth are located for your final work. Now we open up uh, Premiere. And I create a new project in this dialog. I call this Phenakistoscope animation and I need to specify the folder that I've just created on the desktop as the destination for this project. The rest I don't need to worry about and I can just simply click OK. The first thing we need to do once we're in Premiere, we need to go to the uh, timeline settings, Premiere, Preferences, Timeline, and we need to set the default still image duration. You can find under Timeline right here, the second to the bottom entry. If you go to Still Image Default Duration, I think by default it is set to 5 seconds. Let's change this to Frames and say we need three frames for this animation. In the end, for your final animation, you want to change this to two frames, uh, but for the Phenakistoscope, we can leave it at three, which uh, resulted for me in a really nice playback speed. The next thing now is that we need to import our media files, and I can go to my project window in the bottom left corner, and I simply double click into the area where it says import media to start. I go to the folder on my desktop that has all my source files in there and I choose the images folder and the false indigo.wave sound file. The next thing I want to do is I want to take a closer look at the images that are in this folder. So I can just double click on this folder that was automatically created that represents the folder from the source materials in my project window. A folder in a project window is actually called a bin um, and it relates back to some language that is used in uh, video editing. So if you double click on this folder, you see that you have individual still images in there. And these are the uh, 12 individual still image files that you have uh, captured with your cell phone and that we can now start to animate in Premiere. 
If you want to get a preview of any of these files, you can also alternatively, you can also click on this little triangle to the left hand side of your images bin and then double click on one of these image files um, in order to get a preview of that specific image file in your source window in the, um, in the top left corner of your interface. So in order to animate these files, uh, all we need to do first is we take that simple image folder and we drag and drop it onto the new sequence icon that is in the bottom uh, right corner of your project window. This will automatically create a sequence in the timeline and as you can see it already arranges all the images. If you take this playback head and you start to scroll through it, um, all these images are already being arranged one after the other um, in order to create a very simple animation of your material. It is very important though that you shoot your images in the proper sequence already of your uh, in your phone because when you take a look at the image names, just quickly go back to this folder, they're all um, labeled based on the, the time and the date on which they were um, created. And so if you shoot them one after the other, you make sure that you have a continuously increasing number and um, Premiere automatically sorts these images by numbers. So they, it already puts them into the right uh, order for your final animation. All right, so you can already play this back um, and you can use the playback function in your program window, which is here on your right hand side. And um, looks okay, but it's, uh, it, it's very fast. Um, so we want to loop it and it's not uh, in the right image format right now. It is way too big. So sometimes this can even lead to some uh, choppy playback or some uh, pauses in the playback, which we want to avoid. So in order to get your materials into the right format, into the right pixel uh, size and the right compression format for your final project, we need to create another sequence and then nest this first sequence that we've just created actually um, automatically named it images and you can find this sequence in the images bin at the very bottom here. You may want to rename this, maybe give it a name of um, um, original sequence. So you know that these are the images at their original resol resolution. Um, so we need to create a second sequence and then nest this first sequence in there, scale it and then also uh, duplicate it and repeat it over and over, loop it, so to say, so to create a continuous animation of your material. So let's do this next. And I go to File, uh, New, Sequence. And in the sequences, by default, your window should look something like this. You have different sequence presets or settings. And uh, I want to go into the digital SLR settings. And in there, uh, I want to choose the 1080p, which is our full HD resolution, and choose DSLR 1080p 30, which has a, a frame rate of 29.97 frames per second, which is the default frame rate for uh, video footage in North America. Um, the 30 comes from a rounding up of this uh, kind of awkward number here. Um, so we. Uh, internally, we always think of uh, the frame rate as 30 frames per second to make it a little bit easier to calculate frames later on. Hit OK. And uh, I named this sequence, which has now been created in my uh, project window again, Final Sequence. And then I need to go back and choose my original sequence from the images bin. Double click on that. And then I take my original sequence and I drag and drop it into the final sequence. So make sure that your final sequence is open in the, um, uh, in the sequence window or the timeline window. If it is not, close this panel here. If the sequence were not open in here, just simply go to your project window and double click on final sequence, which will open it up in your sequence window. Also make sure that uh, this function, it's called insert and override sequences as nests or individual clips is turned on. It should be blue like this and not white. So make sure that this is turned on and that this is blue. 
and then you would simply take your original sequence from your images bin, drag and drop it in here. You can close your bin and you can already see that this is now a way too big even for a full HD resolution. So that shows you how big these images were that you actually created with your cell phone. We're going to scale those down and then also start to loop them in the next step. Um, first I want to zoom in however and I want to show you um, what uh, this nested sequence looked like. And so you can grab these um, handle points of the uh, scroll bar in the bottom of your sequence window. If you just click on either the um, the in point or the out point here and then drag them toward each other you are zooming in temporarily into your sequence. The same for zooming out. Um, you can get a better overview if you had more or longer material in your sequence. So I want to zoom in and show you that it already created uh, one video track. This is where all these images are housed in, but also one audio track that we don't necessarily need. It's a silent audio track, so I want to get rid of that audio track right away. I later on want to replace this with the soundtrack that I actually created in Audacity to go along with my Phenakistoscope. So I go to Clip. After selecting both of these here, I want to go to Clip and say Unlink. And now I can select each one of them individually want to select the audio track and then just hit the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it. Now it is time to actually scale this footage before we start looping and repeating the footage. So I uh, select the clip in my sequence window and then I go to effect controls right up here in um, the source window. Um, I uh, choose the scale property and if you see when you move your mouse over this number here and then either drag uh, up or down with your mouse, you see how you can scale uh, this window. And I want to scale it so that it just barely fills everything um, vertically. And then you can also, to a certain extent, um, if you still need to change that vertical position just a little bit, uh, you can use the position property, the second one here, uh, put your mouse over this number and then click and move it up or down in order to uh, move the picture up or down. You will probably end up with these uh, black bars on the left and on the right hand side, but this is okay. For now, just make sure that it uh, vertically fills your uh, full HD resolution screen that you see here. And then we're already at the point where we can start to repeat the file and loop it. So I go back to my sequence window, I click on the clip one more time. Then I go to edit, uh, copy, and I move my playback head all the way to the end of this first clip. And then I just paste the clip in here as a second clip. And I need to now zoom out a little bit. And you can also use keyboard shortcuts and you see your playback head is automatically jumping to the end of the second clip. So if you use Command V on the Mac or uh, Control V on the PC, you can start um, making more copies of this clip. And so uh, I would probably go right around 15 seconds. You see in your timeline uh, at the top there is a, a scale which shows you um, how many seconds, how many frames have elapsed. Um, and then you can already play it back. So you can move your playback head to the beginning and then press the play key in your program window or you can also use the space bar on your keyboard as a shortcut to play back this file. Use the space bar again to stop it. And at this point we're actually ready to uh, pair the images with the sounds that you have created in Audacity. And so for me this is going to be my false indigo sound. Um, I recorded the rattling of my false indigo branches as you've seen in the beginning of the video. I brought that into Audacity and then I just treated it a little bit in there. I, I uh, copied out a smaller portion of it that I uh, repeated and I looped and I also applied a small echo to that to make it sound just a little bit fuller. Makes it, makes it sound like there's a little bit more of these uh, seeds in the seed capsules. And then um, I just drag and drop that into my sequence and um, align it with my uh, images. So I drag it all the way to the beginning. 
And if you zoom out, I think it should be right around 15 seconds. It's a little bit less. It's around 14 something. Um, and now we're already ready to <coughs> preview this with the sound together. So let's play this. All right, very nice. So for me, this gives the idea of something is rattling inside of these squares. So they almost turn into boxes that have these mysterious contents that are being uh, shaken around and are being, uh, you know, uh, moved around while we rotate the disk and while all of these boxes are flying around in the space uh, on the disk. At this point, I'm ready to output this piece. And so what I need to do for that is I need to set an in point and an out point. And this gives Premiere markers between which it knows uh, what to export. It's almost like creating a selection um, of your track. And I will start in the beginning. So I move my playback head to the beginning of my track. And then you can hit the um, uh, in point mark in marker in your program window, or I always use a keyboard shortcut, which is I for in point to set that in point. So click that, sets an in point, and then I go all the way to the end of my sound, which is right here. Um, and I hit O for out point, or I use the mark out um, button in my program window. And now you see that everything between the in and the out point is selected, and I can go to file, export, media and export this clip. Now this is a quite complex window, so you don't necessarily need to remember all of these settings by heart, but hopefully you can just go back and, um, and rewatch this video and just follow along as we check off certain items in here. The first um, thing we need to look at is the format, and this should be set to H.264 as the encoding format. There's tons of different uh, other formats in here, but we need the H.264 format, which is a compressed MPEG-4 file uh, that is uh, actually great for, for upload to YouTube, Vimeo, uh, online sharing, but it's also very high quality even for uh, standalone playback in a gallery, for example, from a media player. Um, and then we need to define the output name. So I click on that. By clicking on that name, you can go to your uh, folder, your destination folder, where you want to save this file in. And this is in my Phenakistoscope folder. And I call this um, final Phenakistoscope animation. And I, I make sure that it's the video file.mpeg4 that's selected here. Hit save. And then I go into the video settings and I can leave, because I have um, already specified this preset of the DSLR sequence, I have specified certain kind of settings. I can leave all of these the way they are here. Uh, this is my full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080 pixels. My frame rate is 29.97, so that's uh, very close to 30 frames per second. Uh, the field order should be progressive and the aspect ratio of your pixels in this composition should be uh, square pixels. If any of these settings were uh, at a different uh, setting and you, you can't click on that and change that, click on that little um, checkbox at the behind that setting and then go into the setting again one more time into the drop out menu one more time and then choose your uh, appropriate setting there. But for us, they are all okay. So we don't need to fiddle with these checkboxes. We leave them all checked. Um, the encoding settings should be fine too. It uh, doesn't matter whether it says hardware encoding or software encoding. If you can, hardware encoding is faster because it uses the processors on your computer. Um, and then we need to go a little bit further down to the bitrate settings. These are very important. And what we need to choose here is VBR 2-pass. VBR 2-pass means that we have um, uh, an analysis of the video footage. Um, so VBR stands for variable bitrate. So uh, Premiere is smart enough that it actually goes through your files and it analyzes uh, different peaks of data throughput of the complexity of your image and accordingly adjusts the uh, compression rate. So it al allocates more of a file space if there's more movement going on in your files, if there's a lot of change, if there's a lot of visual complexity and it allocates uh, less uh, space in your file for uh, frames that are 
pretty much staying the same or where there's a lots of similar colors and um, hardly any movement. Now for a full HD resolution, the target bitrate should be right around 10. The maximum bitrate should be right around 12. This is actually pretty good already. If you want really the absolute best quality, you might want to go all the way to 12 here for your target bitrate and, and 15 for your maximum bitrate. But uh, 10 and 12 are usually some pretty good starting points as well. If you get much, much higher here, uh, it won't help actually the quality of your file. It will just unnecessarily blow up your file. It will make it much bigger than it actually needs to be without necessarily increasing uh, the quality of your overall video. And then we go to the audio settings. We're all done with the video settings and we just need to make sure that we have AAC selected and down here for the audio quality that we have high and for the bitrate, we have 320 kilobits per second, which is the absolute highest you can go. Uh, so you get the absolute best sound quality with your project. And then we're already ready to uh, export it. So we just hit export. All right, and now we can just go back to our desktop. So I quickly hide Premiere Pro and look into our Finakistoscope folder and find the final Finakistoscope animation.mpeg4 file in here. You can play that back on the Mac. I just simply select it and then hit my spacebar. And that gives me a pretty good preview already of the file. All right, you're all set. This would be the file that then you can take and upload to YouTube and then provide the link to this YouTube video to Brightspace so that the rest of the class can see it as well.